from Colorado Sports Leader, here's Drew Soysher. Hi, everybody. Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning is politely asking in the absolute nicest way possible that you shut your big fat mouth. <laughs> Manning loves the fact that Broncos fans are so loyal and passionate, but expressed his frustration to KOA radio today over his perception that the 76,000 people in attendance don't seem to understand when it's time to stand and scream and when it's time to sit quietly. Peyton Manning says he'll be retired the next time he attempts a naked bootleg, which kind of worries me because a naked bootleg sounds illegal if you're not playing football. <laughs> Manning threw for 414 yards and four touchdowns during yesterday's historic victory over the Dallas Cowboys, but it's the one he rushed for from just one yard out that was the most fun to watch. It's called a bootleg because the quarterback hides the football, similar to the way bootleggers would hide whiskey in their trousers during Prohibition. The Broncos have been drinking to that for many years. The Broncos had a pair of great bootleggers in their first Super Bowl season of 1977. Both starting QB Craig Morton and his backup Norris Weiss were terrific at concealing the ball on their hips and racing for the corner of the end zone. John Elway scrambled plenty in the 80s and 90s, but didn't call the bootleg often. However, he did score one of his most significant touchdowns ever that way in Super Bowl 32. Brian Greasy scored on the Broncos' first bootleg attempt of this century, tricking the St. Louis Rams on opening day of the 2000 season. The bootleg might have been Jake Plummer's favorite play. He did it all the time, including once to beat the Oakland Raiders on Monday Night Football in 2003. Jake Cutler only tried that once as a Bronco, fooling both the cameraman and the entire Buffalo Bills defense in 2008. And now this, perhaps the most unexpected of them all. Peyton Manning throws for four touchdowns and bootlegs for another against the Dallas Cowboys in the highest scoring game in franchise history. Broncos play the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday. The bootleg play <laughs> won't be necessary. You don't think? Uh, I wanted to update you on the uh, NFL's all-time passing yardage leaders. As you know, uh, Peyton Manning uh, yeah. passed Dan yeah. Marino. This, uh, so now Brett Favre, you see the numbers on the bottom? Yeah. I printed those up on the label maker okay. myself. Oh, very nice. 71,838 for Favre. Manning's now in second place at 61,371. Marino, just 10 behind. He won't catch Manning, though. 61,361. <laughs> and John Elway, the fourth all-time passer now, at uh, 51,475. And uh, Dan Marino looks shockingly like Ray <laughs> Romano in he this looks, bobblehead. <laughs> he, he, does look he does. He looks ill. He, he looks like he's not feeling well. Some seasickness, perhaps. Yeah, he's green. green. From Colorado's sports leader, here's Drew Soysher. Hi, everybody. Turns out that wasn't Nugget center JaVale McGee scoring on an acrobatic dunk, but rather Pierre McGee. McGee passed the basketball off the backboard to himself during the third quarter of last night's victory over the Houston Rockets and then held up an index finger to his lip, which has been tattooed with a handlebar mustache worn by his alter ego, Pierre. I don't know what the thing was under the Is that stinky nasty? No, nah, it's my, uh, my mustache. It was Pierre. McGee regularly tweets under the name Pierre, who he describes as much smoother than JaVale. <laughs> this isn't the first time McGee has tossed a pass to himself for a dunk. He did the same thing on a breakaway while with the Washington Wizards last season. And better yet, he successfully executed a double dunk off the glass during the NBA All-Star Slam Dunk Contest two years ago, long before Pierre was born. Born. What makes this one so special is the absolute unmitigated brilliance of the finger mustache, which takes the idea to, to the next level. Magnificent. This is very exciting. In honor of JaVale McGee's uh, dunk off the backboard and not. finger mustache. Yeah, we're doing this back oh, in the sports office tonight. No. Uh, there we go. Bless no, you. It's the other way. That way. Achoo. We're handing these out for free back in the sports office tonight. <laughs> the Nuggets extended their winning streak to seven tonight with a fabulous second half comeback and one of the most incredible baskets in team history. Nugs came back from 17 points down to beat the Milwaukee Bucks in lower downtown. Corey Brewer steal and dunk tied the game with three minutes remaining. But that was nothing compared to the shot that Nilo Gallinari made a short time later. Watch this. Big play here. Gallo. Throw it up. That's 
what I'm talking about. Gallo Wowie. Nuggies win 112-104. The Nuggets and Warriors have been talking so dirty to each other that they ought to play game six in a bedroom instead of a basketball <laughs> arena. On the day following, fiery accusations from the Warriors that Denver intentionally tried to injure Stephen Curry during game five of their first round NBA playoff series. The two teams continue to charge each other with dirty play. Mm. So many people wrote me nasty emails after I said on 9 News at 5 that LeBron James was just as good as Michael Jordan that I should probably clarify. What I meant to say is that LeBron is even better than Michael ever was. <laughs> and I'm a huge Jordan fan. Absolutely loved him in Space Jam. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I know Mike won six NBA championships and James only has two now, six MVPs to four. But LeBron's still just 28 years old and should pass every individual and team achievement Jordan reached before very long. Both players are obviously athletic freaks with remarkable competitive <laughs> drive, but James is bigger, stronger, and faster. I take him. Uh -huh. <laughs> Strange but Drew, LeBron James nearly got beheaded at the Miami Heat NBA <laughs> Championship Parade today. James was riding aboard a double-decker bus, waving to thousands of Heat fans who came out to celebrate, but the six-foot, eight-inch superstar had to duck every time the bus approached. Look out! An overpass, risk losing his noggin. Very poor planning by the parade coordinator. Colorado School of Mines Center Trevor Wages brought a shocking, thrilling, and absolutely smashing end to tonight's basketball game at Metro State. The Ore Diggers were trailing the Roadrunners by seven points with six minutes remaining in the first half when suddenly... I'm sure the Roadrunners agree with that. Trapped in the corner. Great pass to Wages. Wages slams it down and breaks the glass. That's what I'm talking about. Wages shattered the backboard with a powerful slam dunk. Broken glass covered the court. The rim was dangling in the wrong direction. The school was unable to find a suitable replacement backboard in a timely manner. So the game has been postponed until Sunday night at 7 o'clock when Wages and his big muscles will return to finish it unless he breaks another one. Wow, just happened a couple of hours ago. Wages joins us now live in studio. You still pumped up? It's unbelievable. <laughs> this is so cool. Nuggets draft pick Eric Green's favorite restaurant is Taco Bell, orders the new Doritos shells. Green would be delighted to learn we have many of those here in Denver. In fact, Eric can eat all the junk food he wants as long as he shoots like he did at Virginia Tech. Green led the nation in scoring with 25 points per game, and the Nuggies desperately need somebody who thinks outside the bun. We held a caption contest on social media tonight. Socialites were asked to submit a funny title, short explanation, or description of this picture of more than 2 million people celebrating the Blackhawks Stanley Cup championship in Chicago today. Entries included, meet me at the park. I'm the one wearing a red shirt. Please pass this $5 bill down to the snow cone man. And excuse me, are you in line for the bathroom? But the winner comes from Broomfield's Robbie Garen, who delivered, I've seen that aluminum foil thing on 9 News. <laughs> if you'd like to participate in the next caption contest, simply follow me on Twitter at Drew Soisher and join social media, the world's only 100% spring-loaded technology. Thinking outside the bun. Tonight's bobblehead birthday boy is John Elway, here's baby John, and three big boy Johns. The Bronco, Broncos vice president of football operations is 53 tonight. Looks fantastic, don't you think? Yeah, he does. The Rockies won tonight's game on an extra inning Walk off. Rocks beat the Arizona Diamondbacks yes. in lower downtown with a score tied at four apiece in the bottom of the 10th. Carlos Gonzalez came through with a one out double and then following an intentional walk to Troy Tulowitzki, Willene Rosario ripped a base hit to right, scoring cargo easily. Empty the bench, chase down Rosario and celebrate. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Rocco's win 5-4. Broncos lineman. Orlando Franklin hopes the next time a teammate hits him in the face, it's with a large bag of ruffles or bugles or funions, better yet. Franklin <laughs> vowed revenge today for the shaving cream pie attack that Peyton Manning masterminded and Eric Decker executed during last night's Rockies game. Worst of all, Franklin doesn't even like pie. That is Eric Decker, the culprit here. I hate sweets, but I love chips, potato chips. <laughs> and uh, speaking of sweets, as you may have heard, I'm eating my way through the Stanley Cup uh, playoffs this year. Uh, I'll eat the Stanley Cup cake of uh, every team when they get eliminated from the tournament. And so the first one out is the Vancouver Canucks. I'll take uh, their cake uh, right here. 
and see how it is. Yeah. They how look delicious. How old is that cupcake? It's brand new. Oh. Brand new. We just got them. It's, it's very new. well organized. We have the Western Conference on one side, the, the East on the other. As far as I know, this has never even been attempted on live television before, eating your way through the... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Really good. Think? Tonight. We are celebrating the 125th anniversary of the greatest piece of sports writing ever. Ernest Lawrence Thayer's Casey at the Bat, which appeared at the uh -huh. San Francisco Examiner on June 3rd, 1888. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one more inning left to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. I love that poem so much, I named my old English sheepdog Mighty Casey Mudville Soysher and read her the bedtime story every night after I come home from work. We put up even money now. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. The end. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the same dog, you know, just uh, yeah. you know, different growths, different and haircuts. Stages. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. I collect all kinds of silly uh, Casey at the Bat memorabilia too. This is a uh, right here is a salt shaker. Oh, he yeah. used it tonight for dinner. In fact, oh. um, uh, here's a bobblehead, of course, and and this is a really cool Mighty Casey. Um, what are they called? The music box. Oh yeah. 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 It's musical. Music from a different right? age. Exactly right. A little slower pace. Yeah, I have all kinds of cool Casey at the Bat stuff. <laughs> hey, have I ever mentioned how much I love sports? Yes. yes. Well, I do. A few what? times. Now more than ever, because... Five, four, three, two, one. See you, Dirk. Because a team of scientists in Claiborne, Texas, attached a camera to a Novitsky bobblehead doll and launched it into space with a weather balloon. <laughs> it rose more than 94,000 feet into the Earth's atmosphere, but then suddenly the balloon popped and Dirk Novitsky came crashing down to the ground. Fortunately, the doll was equipped with a GPS device and was found in the woods a few miles from its launch site. It's another reason why I love sports. And I have with me tonight mm. my very own personal Dirk Nowitzki bobblehead doll, which has not reached such heights, and as a result, is in much better condition. Also, straight off the uh, Oprah interview tonight, uh, oh, in 100% spring-loaded plastic, it's Lance Armstrong himself. Hey, have I ever mentioned how much I love sports? Yes. yes. Well, I do. Now more than ever, because the strangest things remind you of great moments in sports history. For instance, did you see 9 News at 6 o'clock? My close personal friend, Kathy Sabin, <laughs> was delivering the forecast when suddenly she turned into Beyonce during the Super Bowl 47 halftime show. That's Kathy on the right, Beyonce on the left. Very difficult to tell them apart. Each using one of those giant stage fans to blow their hair around. Even their performances were nearly identical. Watch this. Oddly enough, both Kathy and Beyonce end their dance routines like <laughs> this, with a little kiss. <laughs> I love sports. Have I ever mentioned how much I love sports? No, really? that one, one time. That one time. Well, I do. I know. Now more than ever, <laughs> because the minor league baseball <laughs> Lehigh oh, Iron yeah. Pigs is set to debut its new oh, no. urinal gaming system no. at a ballpark in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Oh. A video display featuring a downhill snowmobile race is mounted above each urinal. What? The gentleman aims left or right to control the direction of the vehicle. There it is. Oh, I love sports. No. Of course, the Iron Pigs GM says he hopes to make a big splash with this idea. <laughs> Where's the hand sanitizer bottle? <laughs> <laughs> they need lots of that, huh? Uh, Very dangerous on the sharp turns sure. on that course. Yeah. Yeah, lest there be a U-turn, the guy behind you might <laughs> better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Nick the Sea Lion proves tonight that he is not the least bit camera shy. Let's go with crew to the Denver Zoo. It's time for Nick's Picks. Let's do this, big boy. San Diego Chargers or Denver Broncos? Oh, there goes Nick. The Broncos ball is way out there. Yeah, and he went to get it. Oh, he's checking out the camera. Posing, you big sexy thing. Look at the showman. <laughs> that a boy.
<laughs> Broncos. Oh. I That's forgot. So Nick, Nick's handlers told us that they were a little worried because he notices any slight difference in his pool. And I'm like, this little eensy weensy GoPro so camera in the back. Yeah. Sure enough, he noticed wow. it and went and smiled. That's, your best. <laughs> that's the best one ever. Right? Rockies lost their exhibition game with the Chicago White Sox 3-1 today. But that's okay because uh, I got a brand new 2013 version Troy Tulowitzki bobblehead doll Ooh. fresh in the box. I'm told this has never been attempted before on live TV to actually yeah, open a bobblehead doll. You have to be very gentle. These things are extremely, oh, this is a nice one. He's got the new purple helmet that the Rockies are wearing. Where's his bat? Right here. Oh, good question. <laughs> okay, I had to take oh, off the is. padding. Still in there. Oh, the bat is in here, oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah. it is. You, you threw to, it into off the first baseline. Pop yeah, that out. Yeah. I'm glad you noticed that because this would have been embarrassing yeah, for him to try to hit without a bat. Okay. Oh. But so it uh, actually attaches. Usually twists right in. in. Yeah, oh, yeah. There we go. Yep. That? Ah, there we go. There it is. That's Nicely pretty nice, done. huh? Thank you very much. In record time. I appreciate your support. That's a nice one. See, I have a couple <laughs> yeah. other two lows that are really lame. This one's pretty good. <laughs> I feel like I have a good idea of why no one's ever done that on TV before. Because <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> but I expect the Broncos to hit the field running. Okay, make your pick right here. I'm saying Broncos. Ed. Broncos. Broncos, Broncos. Oh! <laughs> and for Who's good luck. Guy? Look at yeah, that. It's a nice catch. Only if it was a race, it'd be back here. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> All right. Thanks for staying up late and joining us for Broncos tonight. Nine News at 10 continues after our final timeout. <laughs> <laughs>